and our part one video was about our whole entire journey of how we met, how we started working together as ceremony partners all the way up into January of 2021, where through the teachings of the pathways of Shakti and the divine tantric connection within our own self, that I was told to do an amazing practice in a, of my own um, doing and journey. And then shared with her on the last video how I was practicing that practice. And we came together through this heart opening orgasmic bliss that happened on January 2nd at 1.44 a.m. is exactly when it happened. <laughs> And so we're just kind of picking up from there. Um, we had an amazing January. It's super juicy. And we share all that on our YouTube channel. And so it was on Instagram. We lost that video. Yes. But it is My on phone died. YouTube. But it's on it. Those of you that caught it live, that's great. And it's on our YouTube and also my Lisa Mariana Below Facebook channel. But I um, hear all the I think we need juicy bits of that. Yes. We're not gonna re explain all I of would, that. Here. I would like to drop the link to our YouTube in our bio though, because um this is a new Instagram channel and our our YouTube is fairly new as well. So we'll have to put a link in our bio to all of our new moon and our full moon videos as well as the juicy good good of the tantric connection that we just shared through our January. So everything came through on 1-1 one, one of, of 21, and then our connection ha happened on 1-2 of 21, and here we are sharing this whole story on 11-11 of 21, recapping what happened. So everything came out um, with my then husband, and we were sitting in our ceremony spot at the river is where we left off in the last video. Recording in progress. So, to resume. Um, so we went down to the river to pray. <laughs> literally, that's what we were um, doing. And, 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 and how are we going to counsel with the with source on how to navigate? And um, we, we left. Everything was kind of coming out onto the table. I mean, we knew we were twin flames. We didn't really even know what that meant. I'd never even researched twin flames, but I, I had, knew. Okay. I had. And Athena quit. It was all like Damn. becoming very Damn. clear. Um, Damn. Stop. <laughs> we have a dog in here. <laughs> Athena, go lay down. So she is my familiar as we mentioned before. Um, so I did not know what that was. I heard of it. I didn't know it was a thing, but now do um, through experience, um, not through research. Um, experiential is the way to learn things. And so we've learned everything this year on what that remember, what that remembrance is like and what that divine masculine, divine feminine, sacred union looks like. And so the downloads were happening. The information was coming through. We were trying to figure out how to navigate to share that with our, you know, our loved ones and, you know, to be authentic with our own self, with our own truth and to, to not deny the fact that we knew this, this union was very real, but it came out in a, in a way that was sudden with my ex-husband and he, um, as we were down there meditating, praying in our ceremonial spot, he, charged down there after we'd been down there for a while and we had communed mm -hmm. as we as lisa had said in the last part she was saying she she communed with her mother her grandmother who had crossed over it was it was not my mother my grandmother is my ex-husband's mother and she grandmother came too oh lydia came yeah she did um, and my, my grandmother came through and so we were getting all these messages from the other side love, that loving it support. Was support and even from my then husband's mother was telling me that this is okay he'll be a better man he'll be stronger for this you have to walk your path and she gave me the song that it all it is well it is well with my soul and i sent that to him um later on that day and he um but he had we'd obviously been down there too long he didn't know she was down at the river meditating with me 
which infuriated him that she was still on the property. And so he charged down there as a dragon warrior. And um, and so um, just basically charged in to our meditation and demanded answers. And so at that time, he demanded from her whether we had been together physically. Did you lay with my wife? And I said yes, because it was the truth. You know, I didn't, wasn't going to deny it or, or anything. It, it was the truth, but it was, you know, it was really hard to... Yeah, to, there was... To give him her full information. We never intended to hurt anybody with it. And so also full intention of being completely transparent. And so I said, we're twin flames. And he's like, what does that even mean? And I said, well, I mean, it means that we have this soul contract to complete and that we're supposed to be together in this life. And I don't know what that looks like, you know, because I'm married to you. And he kept asking about the twin flame connection and what is that? What is that? And, you know, he was downloading and I could see he was receiving knowledge, but still angry. And so he stormed back off and apparently he went to go research on the computer what twin flames were. And we, we continued to meditate. And then it was time for that woman that had stayed with our Airbnb. We did a ceremony for her. Um, and she was coming over to do a reading for us. And so we went up to the cabin and she's like here. And I was like, well, we need to do this reading. She came specifically to, to hold this appointment. And, and when we had sat with her in ceremony, after that ceremony, she was like, you guys are twin flames, right? And yeah. we, you know, we were just realizing it ourselves. And, and she said, like, watch out. Whenever I come through, I bring the energy of Kali Ma. <laughs> And we're like, whatever that means. Like, I just, I know what Kali Ma means because I've experienced a house fire and lots of other chaos and lots of death. And I was like, well, shit, I don't know what that means. Well, here we go. Um, and so that's what was happening. Just leave me. And she told the truth. And so she came and did our reading. And it was... Where well, there were some card pulls, and then she did a the uh, astro, a uh, what's it called? Composite chart where our, she combines both of our charts and does the reading together. So we are twin flames under the sign of Gemini with Gemini the, twins. Yes, we're Gemini twins with the overruling planet of Venus. And currently, right now, Venus is almost at her highest point as we're recording this, and Venus is in the process of a 19 month transit. And ending that cycle about to move into Capricorn it is about expansion and moving directly into our heart path. And it started, that Venus transit started in June of 2020, which is when we started holding ceremony together. So these planetary alignments, and we just found that part out this week. Um, but she told us lots about our chart, lots, and she pulled lots of cards that were very, very on point. And it was a, a really divine Just reading. Constant, like I would pull a king card and she would pull a queen. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, like, I, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, you can't make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. It was so. <laughs> and everything was just like more and more and more and more balance, serendipities, more balance, and more signs. Over. Perfect union, perfect union, perfect union everything was leading to these um these answers and not only that but our remembrances and my remembrances of all her embodiments you know mm -hmm. i mean like when i when i see her back in the temple of isis i we're i know she's blue i don't know if i'm blue but i remember that um you know like when you see depictions of krishna or kali where they're blue i see that and i remember that i remember so many things that it's not even possible to literally remember within this own human brain, but the encoding has come through, through these tantric connections and these light codes and the galactic information has come through as divine DNA and activations. And that's what we're doing is we come together as twins 
to divinely activate and to come into sacred union. And there's 144,000 pairs of twins that are coming together right now to lead the forces of the light workers into this next dimension. We are literally in the new earth right now. And so as everything came out, then, you know, um, we finished this reading. She left the property. I went to go speak to my then husband and he says, well, I'm going to print off the divorce papers. It's, I'm like, what do you mean? And I, I said, I don't want this to be over. I never intended for this to be over. I want to teach you about this tantric energy. I want to share with you this beauty and this, this, this knowledge is coming through. And, and, you know, I don't know what it looks like with, with her. And he's like, well, do you love her? And I said, yes, I love her. And I also love you. You know, I don't want to stop loving you. I will never stop loving you. You know, you're my husband and I've been dedicated to you in this life. And he said, well, then if you do right now in this moment, you will declare to me that you'll never see her again. And I was like, well, we have ceremonies planned. We have retreats planned. How can you say that? And he said, well, you, you can't have that and have me too. And I said, well, I have to have a moment to think about that. It just blew my mind that how I just now remembered her and found it and that she's going to possibly be ripped away. And I said, I, I, I can't tell you that right now. And he said, just for the fact that you can't tell me that right now means that you've already made your decision. He said, we're done. And I was like, it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to make a decision right now. And he's like, I'll just print off the papers. I said, no, we're not doing that right now. You know, let me just have some space. I'm going to go. He's like, you just get out of this house. Go, go sleep in your yoga studio. And so I moved out into the studio. And I stayed out there and brought my dog. And... um then it was, uh, you know, it was over energetically. He just decided that was not going to happen. He was, I said, you know, I really want to, to talk about this and make it work. And I want to share with you about the sacred union. And I feel like there's so many things that we can learn in our own relationship. Can you want to see a counselor together? And he's like, there's nothing that we can do. And he, he did attempt some counseling but it was just at that point energetically done. And I knew the, the contract, the sacred contract that we had signed to be, you know, husband and wife and have two amazing children together was completed. And I was like, how is this going to happen? I, I thought that maybe we'd extend this out until my daughter graduated or until my son came out from under the water. And he was literally under the water. And I was like, how are we going to, tell him what happened. You know, um, he's, he's, we can't reach him right now. And I, I was like, this is not how I wanted this to come out. It's, it came out suddenly and, and harsh and, um, you know, in a way that's perceived by, by man as adultery. And I was like, but I, you know, how can this be? Because I'm following my heart, you know, I'm following my sacred path. And I know that everything that's lining up is telling me that I'm supposed to be with her. How can that, how can that, you know, how it's hurt? I don't want to hurt people. And it was so confusing and mind blowing. And we're trying to navigate through that space and, uh, you know, being told that my marriage is over and, you know, trying to tell my children. And then right at that moment, the next week, uh, my son pops up and is stuck in Guam and has to fix the submarine. He works on the nuclear reactors. He's a nuclear engineer and they had to, to do some repairs. And I was able to talk to him and tell him exactly what's going on and talk to my daughter and tell her exactly what's going on. And um, they were part of the process as we navigated through that really treacherous water. And as we came out through that other side, I realized that, you know, he and I were, were done um, as partners and that contract was complete. And I was okay with that. I had to meet, move forward with what spirit is calling me to do. And so I was going to move in with my sister. I moved in with my sister for a brief period of time. Um, but she also moved in another roommate that was not cohesive to my healing. And I had to quickly move out. I moved back to the studio and then I was going to hold a Reiki training, which was on schedule. And then all of a sudden it was February in Texas and the weather shifted. And she was going to come to the Reiki training. She's like, I'm not stepping foot on that land. You know, like I'm not coming over, you know, to do the Reiki training with you. So 
I was in the cabin and on the phone also, with you. I was like, um, pretty sure you're not going to end up staying at your sister's house for very long, so you might as well just come here. <laughs> but I had to let her have her process, even though I saw what was really going to happen. So she cleared out a whole entire closet for me. And I made room. Yes, and she made room for me and gave me a whole entire master closet and half her bathroom drawers. And didn't tell me that she did that, but she says, I'm coming to get you. Well, so the snow and ice were coming. At the, the day that the Reiki training was supposed to be taking place was also when the snow and ice were coming and you were supposed to be going to a retreat. Yes. I was going to an ashram to figure out what the fuck's going on. I was going to sit, sit in so a silent meditation <laughs> for four days. And so I had that scheduled as soon as the Reiki training was over, I was going and, and I was going to get out to North Texas, close to Oklahoma and sit and be with my guru and just be and pray and meditate and be quiet. And so I had that scheduled and then all of a sudden this Texas weather shifted and it was literally the coldest winter in probably several hundred years. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to get down to seven, seven degrees, which is in unheard Texas, of in Texas. And um, the freeze and ice was coming. So I knew that nobody was showing up to the online portion, the in-person portion of my Reiki training. The mist was starting to happen. The, yeah, the sh roads were going to shut down and very soon, as soon as it got like, cold. Um, the weather is coming. Yeah. It's happening. I'm coming to get you. And I was like, okay, my king is coming to save me. So she sa came to save her queen, picked me up, scooped me up brought me, I, and I didn't have a working vehicle. There's another piece here is that I had let myself become so complacent in my life that I was sharing a car with my daughter and my ex-husband and my vehicle was sitting there just not working for almost two years. And we were keeping it for insurance purposes to keep my 16 or my 17 year old daughter's insurance down. But I had no wheels. I was stuck in the cabin and it, I was about to be frozen in. And also the cabin is, is above ground. So I would have no running water, you know? And I was like, what is happening? She's like, no, no. I'm coming to so get So she came to rescue me through rush hour traffic I'm into the ice like, starting to come. I'm down. getting in my car now. And I'm coming now. Just be ready. She just stayed on the phone with me the whole time. And then she's like, I'm here. Pulled just onto the go. property, put her shit in the car, left the property, went home. With the dog, the snow came. Me and the dog, her and the dog, and the ice and snow. The ice came and snow came. And snowed in over Valentine's Day. Yes, which was when I was supposed to be at the ashram for two weeks, and it was two weeks of utter divine bliss <laughs> with red satin sheets, with red satin <laughs> sheets <laughs> that I'd had in my studio for years. Um, didn't that know what they were for, but they were for us in that moment and we had no running water our pipes froze so we were melting we did snow have electricity and gas and we had a gas. fire it was beautiful and we stayed snug and warm in our bedroom the whole time and we had food we did go get groceries and we were melting snow to make a boiling water and we were going to the neighbors to fill up water jugs and mm. i was no place i'd rather be snowed in with than with you it was the most blissful, snowed in moment. And it was, you know, still ever. through Corona too. So like, you know, I mean, everything was still kind of shut down and it was amazing. So Corona on ice. Yes. It was called <laughs> Snowbid. <laughs> Snowbid. And so um, Corona on ice, I didn't read that one either, but that's really what happened. And so we, that's when I moved in with her and um then and that's it trying to figure out like okay am i and her lease was coming up too so i was like okay where am i gonna live after that she's like where am i gonna live and she knew knew it, that she was gonna supposed to supposed to move south i had been told in our very first ceremony that we sat together the very first time i received information that when it was time for me to move that i needed to move 
um, closer to where she lived because of the work that we would be doing. We needed to be in close. So she was north of Dallas. I was south of so Dallas. So I was already planning on that. And I was actually kind of planning on moving in 2020. But that happened. Corona happened. The crown happened. And it, it, you know, so I just extended my lease one more year. And so, yeah, we just, then it was like, okay, well, that's coming. Um, and now we're, you know, she just started hauling things to the house and we I were was just making trips and uh, packing my stuff and packing her stuff. And it was all kind of merging and coming together. And then I left pretty much all of my furniture. I just brought my personal stuff and then, um, decided that we we're going to sit down over the dining room table when my children were all present when my son got out of the, um, the deployment and came back and we hashed everything out over the kitchen table and wrote out the terms of our divorce. And um, I wrote it up on rocketlawyer.com and took it to the county clerk and we went and filed it and that was complete and very painful, very much a death process and very much a grieving process. And, you know, um, it's still, there's still a lot of death and grief, but now I feel like I'm into this portal of rebirth. I finally at Samhain, which is All Saints Day, Halloween was the final last day of the Celtic year. And um, All Saints Day is uh, the November 1st, and it's the day to celebrate the saints and all of those that have crossed over. And we had a beautiful ceremony and it's like a, a total new beginning. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we've decided to share our whole entire story. Mm -hmm. um, there is some really cool stuff that's happened. This but also in, in January, as this was all unfolding, we were also discussing the fact that we had a retreat in Hawaii in June. And it was, and, and I already invited her to come and do the retreat. It was already me. a plan, work mm -hmm. schedule, just, you know, that's what it was about. But then she starts telling me about what the, we're discussing what's happening in June as far as our retreat goes. And I'm like, she tells me that we have a week before everybody else comes. Well, we have a condo over there. So, I realized, so, so like, we have what? a week alone, just the two of us in Hawaii before we do this work and all of this information is coming out. Like, what? <laughs> <Are you? laughs> so, so spirit aligned that to happen. By the time we got to that place, things were, you know, really settling, mm -hmm. you know, like reality had shifted she was then we were living together papers were filed papers were filed feelings were starting to some acceptance was coming in not acceptance from any of my ex-in-laws none of but that but a lot i lost a lot of a lot of people in my life but the kids started um started becoming aware that i was happy um i'd never I was never not happy, but I'd never experienced bliss and complete witnessing of my truth and allowing for me to walk my path without any persuasion or influence or need to show up in a way that was so supposed to, or I have to, it was just this. Or a limitation. No limitations. Yeah. Which I'd never known before. I'd always felt like I had to report to somebody, um, still getting over that PTSD of having to check my phone and send messages and realize I don't have anybody to check my phone and send messages to. Like I'm reporting to myself and source. Of course I check in with my children every day and that's super important to me, but that's a want to not have to, you know? And so it's really a, a totally new space for me. But as far as what happened um, after Snowvid, then we decided, okay, well, we, I think maybe I need an RV, you know, maybe I'm going to just live in an RV. And she's like, well, I was told to get a house um, out South 
And I'm like, well, I, I need an escape plan. Like I need a for sure plan where I know I can live. I don't know what's happening with you and the kids, but right now I just need to know I have a place to live. So I made a commitment to buy an RV. And the very next day, then a dear friend of mine who owns this house that we're in um, said, why don't you come and live with me? And I have half of this house available. It's a huge house. I'm, I have the master suite. You can have the other bedrooms and um, you know, we can be roommates. And I was like, well, there's a whole nother thing is that I know I would love to, I'd love to say yes. And I do want to say yes. I'm saying yes. However, you know, Jamie and her family need a place and her kids are going to be with their grandparents over the summer because we planned on having them being taken care of while we're in Hawaii and trying to figure out what's going to happen before school starts and where our youngest, you know, my bonus child, my, my son, my youngest son, her son is starting school. We didn't know where he was going to go to school and all that. And so, well, that's shifting out, but she needs a place to live. And she said, well, I've been really connecting with both of you too on your videos. I've been watching your journey. I want her to come live with us too. So I'm going to give you half of my house. And we were just blown away. We're like, okay, all right. That gives us a safety net, a place to live, a place to ground, a place to move into. Mm -hmm. So we start packing everything um, in May. Somewhere in there, though, there was a moment because we were back and forth. Where, where are we going to go? What, you know, what do I need to do for me and my kids? And she was like, what do I need to do for myself? And then it was like this, you know, well, let's get a house. Well, maybe we go and we're together and we're apart and we're together and we're apart. Maybe my sister. And like, like my sister. What, where, how are we supposed to yeah. do this? And then there was this moment of like, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? And we had to get well, really real. And she had to literally ask me, like, we were looking for plan D, plan E, all these other plans. We were discussing all the various Yes, uh, and she's know, like, but what's plan A? What do you really, really this want? This sounds like, like plan D. This doesn't feel right to me. I don't know. I don't want to, like, live yeah. over here while you live over there and for, for a year, and we'll see what happens in a year. Like, no, yeah, that's not why I don't the fucking do this shit because <laughs> this all happened and here we are. Like, let's do it. Let's just do it. So she called me out. Why do you, you, you know, want to commit like, to What it? do you really want? <laughs> and we wrote down a manifestation list of what we really wanted. Mm -hmm. And it all lined up where, okay, we want to have a house together. We want to have a place for all of our children to come and stay. Like, my daughter when, is, was moving to college, but I want a place for her to live over the summer where she has a place in my home. Although, you know, she has a place in, in the home that we have together on the land, you know, she, I want her to have a place in our home in her own bedroom where she's not sleeping on the couch, you know, like a guest. And all of that happened as it called in. Then our friend that owns this home, dear sweet friend said, you know, I'm going to I'm going to move to Kansas again and stay with my fiance. Why don't you guys ha take the whole house and y'all can rent it? And we signed a lease agreement and committed. And we're like, okay, this is going to be the next year. We're leasing this house. And it's, it was a big jump because it's a huge mortgage payment. My home was paid off. I didn't have a mortgage payment, you know, and to really step into that manifestation of, okay, this is what we're doing. Signed her son up for, all the for high school on the list. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, picked his school and got him signed up for, for athletics and, you know, all the things happened. And my daughter um, signed up for college and she got herself an apartment and, you know, her, her daughter are, um, they're, like she said, they're just a couple weeks apart, um, decided that she wants to, you know, stay here for the next year and then eventually move with her, um, her family into to Colorado. And so, you know, like all these pieces started happening. So we literally get everything packed and it took eight U-Hauls. It was exhausting over three weeks as we're prepping to go to Hawaii. And we literally move in our last load, like what a day before we leave or two days, a couple days before we leave for Hawaii. It was like the week before. Yeah. And then we leave for Hawaii for three weeks. We have the week, in the condo 
and and then we have the extra time at the place we were renting then we have the retreat and then we decided we wanted to make a commitment to each other while we're over there and hold a ceremony mm -hmm. and we did a hand fasting ceremony on the big island and our reiki master um, was there present for the yoga retreat and she did the ceremony for us and we, the one we would have the counseling session mm -hmm. and on um, the big island, living on the big island was my yoga teacher who i had been trained by my mentor and um, our very first conversation she was on my massage table and we were talking about hawaii and how we wanted to do retreats in on Hawaii that was both of our dreams and then I ended up working with her for seven years before she went and we got to meet up with her and she lived across the street from this beach that we ended up doing our ceremony at and so we had three witnesses one being our Reiki master one being my yoga teacher and the other being her partner and it, it was like these it was just you can't make this shit up yeah right? it's just a, it was perfect we got to do our ceremony and commit to each other once again in in this lifetime so it was on this magical beach that is called Puaco and done several reef dive trips where we were snorkeling out into the beautiful, beautiful reef, so immaculate and untouched and swam with the fishes and swam with the sea turtles and the sea turtle guided us around his territory and gave us a tour yes. and the uh, we saw an octopus and uh, so many species of fish and it was just uh, it's like just 15 a, years in the making yeah. for me to journey back to Big Island and to to circle back with my yoga teacher. But I was like scooped up by a mermaid and taken back to the spot. And not only was I taken back to the spot, I was able to join in, in sacred union with her. Yes. <laughs> so it was a beautiful ceremony. As we ceremony. swam with the fish and the turtles. Yes, on this magical beach that's made of green sand, which is actually peridot. And so um, we also had held a magical ceremony there the week before with some of the women that came to the retreat. Um, had a really tumultuous time um, with the chaotic energy that Pele holds. Again, the energy of birth, death, rebirth is so raw on that island. And there was quite a bit of turbulence in the energies of the people that were present mm -hmm. and so we navigated through all that throughout the week and together together <laughs> really um and then a lot of the women that were in my teacher training that were there to receive their reiki certification and their teacher training certification really just um came through as hardcore sisters and showed up you know with their full game on to to be at that at that retreat and it was really magical and then we ended up back at that beach the, the, the day before we were leaving and it was uh, pretty much six months to the day that we had been together physically in this life but remembering all the lifetimes that were together that oh so incredible and beautiful so the ceremony was magic and then we got on the plane um everything that happened that next day was so fun i want to i want to put this back on and see it keeps locking can you find out why it's doing that i don't know so um the last day of our retreat just hit the button the last day of our retreat in hawaii this is uh this is some really crazy stuff so we had went to we had finished our hawaii retreat had our beautiful ceremony the next day we were getting ready to leave. And so as we were getting ready to leave, we literally had to clean the whole entire house that we were staying in um, because of, you know, that was, you know, part of the agreement. And we had to pile like all of our luggage 
and bags of trash and everything over the top of the, the convertible that we had rented. Um, so I don't know why, can you turn the Wi-Fi off? Turn off the Wi-Fi, I think you're having, or I don't know, something's happening with the connection. Just let it be. Oh, well, whatever. Let's do this it. one. Is it not doing anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we were having to go down the mountain, literally to take our trash out, you know? And so we were taking our trash out and taking all of our stuff to the airport. And we still had some things at her yoga teacher's place, which was our big instrument cases and um, several other big pieces that we had to travel to get across the ocean with all of our sacreds to hold the retreat and the ceremony. Um, and we only had this little bitty car. So, you know, we had made several trips up the mountain to get our stuff up the mountain to the rainforest, to the place we were holding the retreat. And then we're like, okay, we have, we can get everything in the car coming down, but we won't be able to get everything to the airport on one trip. How are we going to do this? Like, how are we going to work yeah, this out? There was one big case. Like, we could fit all the other ones, but not With this giant this one instrument big case. case. So we left that it was at Michelle, down the mountain. It was at, at Michelle's, Michelle's house <laughs> by, at the beach um, where she lives. And so we decided, okay, we really, I really wanted to, um, there were several things that we wanted to do that day. First of all, we had to, we took those other ladies to the airport the day before. So it was just her and I left. And I wanted to see one more sunset. I really did. Um, and it worked out to be that we got some of the stuff unloaded. We went to um, down the mountain. Like we dropped it off at the airport. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> just like left it there. And I left. Like we had to wait for people to show up to check baggages because in you in, know, in Hawaii, they, and Hawaii, they show up like and just close up. like two hours. So they were they are basically on Hawaii time. So they just show up kind they're of they're supposed somewhere. to show up like two hours before the flight, yeah, somewhere before the flight, but or maybe an hour. They didn't really, and so we had to wait for them to get there, which we were on a very strict time crunch because if we could drop off some of the bags, then we could take the convertible to go get the other big giant instrument case and get back there just in time to make our flight. And they were taking forever to show up. So finally, they show up. Yeah. And we check our bags and I, I, um, trying to get everything through the baggage check, which is all outdoors. And it's like in this little Island area, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and everyone's on chill time and we're, we're going with the flow, you know, like, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, and to check the bags, you're going to leave the car here. She made a loop around the airport so I could check the bags and she would get in trouble for staying there and not, you know, not parking. And then came back to get me as I finished checking in the bags, then it was almost sunset. And so she picks me up and we run with the car super fast up the, um, out of the airport and get to a high road, grab some food. And then we come down the mountain as the sun is, is um, coming and we head toward the beach and we literally got to eat our food and watch the sunset in all of that fell swoop. Yes. And so then as we ate the food and watched the beautiful sunset over the ocean, which is always freaking magnificent, magnificent. Then we zoomed up the highway to go get the giant instrument case, get that in the car, which it starts raining, pouring. I get lost going to the car and I can't find the apartment again. And I'm like knocking on random people's doors, trying to figure out which apartment was Michelle's. And then I finally see them come outside and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I've been looking for y'all. And so we get in the car, get the huge case in the car and we're praying that it, it's going to stop raining because we have to keep the top down to put this giant, um, giant instrument case in the car, which it didn't rain anymore after that. Was that what it was? I don't, I don't even remember. I don't so remember. we had the instrument case on its end and we're rolling with the top down down the highway, we, going to the high, going to the airport. We're like screeching into the airport. Yeah, we had a cutoff time. She's going to drop check our bag. me off so I can check the bags, and she's going to drop off the uh, rental car. Right. And then make it back from the rental car drop off to meet me. So I'm doing the bags. So she takes this the, giant the case remainder and the, the remaining bags. bag, and she's 
fiddling with these ginormous instrument case and bags and trying to get it through and the baggage like, check. This bag is overweight and this one is not. And then you can put stuff out of that one into this one, but they're all like stuck. Or they and they're, or they're gonna leave our bag in Hawaii. Right. And, and so here I am like I'm literally I had to drop her off and I'm going to go turn in the car. And so I was like, oh shit, I don't know what's happening, but I gotta go turn in this car before we charge for another day. And so I'm like, I got it. I got yeah. it. I follow the rental car vehicle shuttle to the rental car place. And I was like, okay, he's going where I need to go. I'm just going to follow him. <laughs> and I'm like, I have bags that are opened up and I'm pulling stuff out of this one and putting into that one and putting stuff out of that one. There's into this nobody one, else in line. Like, it, and they're like sitting there going, yeah. you, you need to hurry up. The airport's about we, to shut We down. really need that done. <laughs> like now. And I'm like, you see me, right? You see me like as good fast as I can, you know, and I finally they just get to go home. They just, yeah, they just <laughs> one out of there. We're the last people. I finally get it. Okay. It weighs good. Okay. It's, it's fine. Okay. This was fine. Okay. Except for I can't get the handle to go out of the suitcase. And I, I roll in and I come in. <laughs> to the thing and I'm like get dropped off by the shuttle the last shuttle goes ma'am we're leaving do you do you need a ride I'm like oh please wait for me please wait for me so he, he he's the very last shuttle of the very last that's it like they're closing down it's 10 30 on Hawaii time you know <laughs> and so he waits for me and drops me off and I see her over there struggling and I run over there and I'm like what's going on and she's like I can't get this to close and so we get it to close we run into the line and everyone's in line, you know, to get to board. And we're literally the last people. And she's going through the thing. And they're like, ma'am, where's your license? And where's your ticket? And she left her license over at the ticket counter. And I was like, oh, no. And then so this guy just starts walking up. He's like, is this your license? So he just hands her the license. She's like, yeah, that's mine. And I go on through. And then the whole thing with the ticket happened. <laughs> then, yeah, <laughs> The lady, I'm like, am I, the other thing is I'm digging, I, something else is stuck in my pocket and I'm trying to get it out. And it's like, I'm wearing these pants, I think even, and it's like, it, it, it just keeps hanging. I can't get it out. I can't get it out. And she's like, come on, come on. And I'm like, I really am trying and I'm totally tangled. <laughs> I finally hand it to her and she's like, okay. And then she's like, here's your receipt. And there's like two guys waiting for us at the TSA, you know, you have behind to walk outside her. up the stairs to get on the plane. And so they're like, they're like waiting just to scan our carry on stuff, you know, so we can get on the actual airplane line. And they're sitting there like, come on, people, come on. And, and this receipt that she's handing me out, I, I go and I walk behind her to go to 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 hand my backpack and stuff to to these these guys and this gust of wind comes and it blows the receipt out of my hand and the receipt gets caught in this vortex of and it's fluttering like like this over and over and over and over again like and i'm like grasping trying to catch it <laughs> like like a bird or something in the air and it, it's it's not blowing anywhere else. It's just like up and down, right here. <laughs> and they're like, "Come on!" And I'm like, "It's going on so long that I pause and I'm like, do you see that this is happening?' And I'm not doing it. It's happening all on its own. But I'm trying to be there. <laughs> I'm trying to catch it. I'm trying to get to you. I can't make it." stop and then i like <laughs> finally catch it and i'm like ah, you know and they're like <laughs> totally the energy where's that necklace that it was, was the, the energy Kylie, of maui maui trickster energy totally mm -hmm. playing itself out in the moment i didn't even know that happened because i was already in line i was just standing there i didn't even see any of that and she didn't tell me that until like a day or two later and i was like oh, what it's it was just happening and it but was me playing out the character just I, I knew that it was just playing out through me it wasn't my doing it wasn't my creation it's it so was funny. something that they had to experience so, yeah it was great and uh, the whole day was perfectly orchestrated like to the moment and we weren't even stressed 
like just rolling in, catch the sunset, <laughs> drop off the bag, get the you know, sliding get the bags. Yes, literally <laughs> sliding in. <laughs> We get in the line and like the guy who was originally trying to check me in with the luggage walks he's like, oh, like, oh, you guys made it. You're not stuck on the island. All right. And we're like, yeah, we made it. And so get home and then get, um, come back and end up getting settled into our place. And finally actually moved in. Got finally unpacked and moved in. And that happened in July. And then, um, you know, then Dakota started school, oh, asked we went to college. Oh, we threw a throwdown throw for kids. my son coming home from the Navy and my daughter turning 18. And, um, well, the 18th graduating, birthday was actually graduating in, high school and yeah, then going was, to college. That was it was more for the going away party yeah. for all of her friends. And so, um, you know, we're those kind of moms that, throw the huge parties for the kids and allow them to have a space to party where it's safe, you know, and my son's an adult, you know, but the um, daughter is not. And so all of their friend groups got to come as well as Dakota had his friend groups come from his old school. So they all got to co-mingle and hang out as siblings. Um, no, which was the first time. It was the first time. Happen. And it was great. So, and it was like, it was at a point in which the, um, I guess you could say the resentments or frustrations had really it settled settled down and then there we, we got to have this interaction that was like on the level and there was some lubrication with the alcohol that actually <laughs> played a, a medicinal role smooth things over. in the process and, and mm -hmm. you know so and they asked and brought her differently part of aspen's therapy through the whole everything that came out was to paint and she was painting a beer pong table <laughs> uh, which turned out really cool and very beautiful but that was she would come into the studio and just paint and so she brought her table and then and during the end of the night everyone ended up country dancing two-stepping around the whole living room around <laughs> the table the table was the focal point yeah and then the back table the older older young adults were out there playing drinking games and um it was it was really fun so it was really great her oldest daughter um, doesn't party and she actually wasn't here um so it ended up working that the energies of the other three kids who are really social were all together for the she first was, time she was house sitting and kitty sitting from a feather while yes he was in costa rica that's right which we, we, saw her we will be <laughs> in costa rica next next year for our, our yoga retreat yeah so um yeah, so then, the, you know, we got came home and everything was getting settled and we've been settling and we have, both have a studio space, a private space in this home to hold private clients as well as coaching clients. We have a yoga and studio and a music studio. We've been getting invited to, um, to, do, to show up together and so I'll bring yoga and meditation and opening ceremony and shamanic drumming and she'll bring the DJ set and hold space for the shamanic circles and um, it's been really beautiful to be able to come into our community it and keeps, it keeps flowering out and to be invited to more and more places to show up together. We're going to be doing um, stuff in Oklahoma. Um, we have a retreat while I'm co-facilitating in Egypt here in a couple weeks, which I said yes to. <laughs> and that's a huge, huge deal. Um, and then we're doing a big retreat in Costa Rica. And so as all of this has come together and all of our, our gifts are merging and we're offering things together in partnership through not only our yoga retreats, we've launched a coaching program and it's a combination of all of the things that we share and teach, not just yoga, but it's yoga, shamanic teachings, um, shamanic practitioner work, uh, like coaching, tantric, sound healing, sound healing, tantric, twin flame connection, divine feminine masculine connection, and teachings of the sacred texts. So all of this is part of the one-on-one -on -one coaching that we're doing, as well as offering certifications in Reiki, yoga certifications, and then teaching people how to really do this shamanic work as a practitioner through power animal retrieval, learning the, the indigenous practices and, and, and appropriation from all over the world, 
um, honoring and respecting the process, deep dive meditations into finding our own personal medicine woman within ourself and what that looks like um, as far as, you know, um, one-on-ones with the women that are in this mentorship and mastermind and helping each individual woman pull out her own gifts in this realm of offerings and where she really wants to focus, whether it's on personal healing with combo or sapo, um, plant medicine ceremony, Reiki, or learning to teach these things, you know, soul retrieval, extraction healing, working with death and dying, power animal retrieval, all of that. So um, it's been a beautiful process. And through that, that program has been birthed for us to really uh, deep dive, share our gifts with the women that are really willing to step in and show up and as, and hold space for our larger community through our video chats and our trainings and our retreats and online courses and things like that. So it's been a lot. It's been huge. Um, our one year is coming up. Yeah, it's coming up in January. You know, I can't it's believe it. Soon. So we had just a, been... two, re- two more ceremonies this uh after we had our Hawaii ceremony, then we had a Labor Day ceremony again for the second year in a row. And then we had an All Saints and a Halloween ceremony for the first time, which was extremely powerful and so freaking beautiful. And the tribe that showed up for that was like all in, like mm-hmm. fully into stepping in. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones that are also really launching into this coaching program with us in co- combination with some of the women that are in my Yoga for Love online training program. And then we'll have our winter solstice ceremony, a Reiki training coming up this year. And then we'll be hosting, co-hosting in Oklahoma Mm -hmm. uh, in the winter in a very sacred womb-like container of of rebirth and, um, and, and uh, introspection. So yeah, we're continuing to hold ceremony on the Sabbaths, the eight Sabbaths, which are the, um, the equinoxes and the solstices and the six week holidays in between that and being called to different places to host retreats in the future. Uh, We do have our 2022 scheduled out. So all those events are going up very soon. It's going to, you know, all of it's on our website at yogaforlove.com as well as on our Facebook pages. But it's just been, um, it's been, uh, we've been activated. You know, we were already leveling ourselves up individually through this, union through this cohesiveness um what it, what it is doing is it's allowing us to not only step in as individuals in our highest self but it is it's like a superpower together we we it's we became like this other level of beyond what I can do individually as, as myself in my higher self and as my highest good and, and, and for her as well. In, in union, um, there's, it's, it's exponential. Just, it is. there's so much that can be, uh, that we can do and, and activate within others. And we recognize and even through distance through witnessing yeah. um, our process through, um, seeing us, um just being ourselves um, um it it activates people and it triggers on, and a lot tri- you yeah, know on on many different levels of uh recognition and um you know it's just really an honor i just have to say that it's really an honor to um hold that space it's an absolute honor to be in union with this divine being here for another round for another journey so it's to a founder again to, to be together like we, we, were, we were like oh right you're here i forgot i know like, i know like, like, oh, oh my god you're here this like, is oh, really I'll happening enter, like this is happening like, oh yeah you're real yeah i'm real you're real i'm real, <laughs> I'm real. I'm real. it's really so, happening yeah. you know and it, it's um as, as much as it, it blows our own minds constantly, um, we do recognize like that this union is beyond us as well. Um, there, there's power in our what we offer together 
in ceremony and outside of ceremony, even in our regular 3D world process, which is now developing into our follow your path and purpose, mentorship, mastermind, soul coaching, lifestyle training, you know, through that, through these pieces that were being, are being put together, we are simply just playing the role and following through and being obedient and listening and acting. And, you know, through that, there has been a whole lot of loss, a whole lot of um, grief, a whole lot of death. But I'm fucking done with that process, mm -hmm. y'all. I am so done being in the grief and the death and the trick people who are triggered. You know, anybody who's triggered by my truth at this point, that's your work. I I apologize for I being the trigger. Sure. I I don't like being the trigger, but that's what I do. I mean, that's apparently how I roll. Just like the trickster rolls through her. I'm the trigger, you know, I, I mean, I even trigger my kids, you know, my kids are like, ah, you know, that's, you know, of course every mother triggers their kids in certain ways, but it's like that with people that just witness my journey. And I'm like, why do you even care? You know, why does it affect you? And what I'm noticing is that it, it makes you rise up and reflect your mirror, your own mirror. I'm just holding up that mirror, that double-sided mirror, whatever we hold up. Our God self is reflected back to us and whatever is not ours is reflected back out into the world. I hope so it is. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Don't get caught in the Dharma. You know, people get caught in what they. Supposed to do. Everything that's supposed to be what the rules of man are, you know, and, and, and we're. Soul contracts we're are way higher than that. The universal law here. Spiritual law. Our truth. contract. Um. There's a difference between a soul in a, union. In a higher plane. Right. On a higher um, dimension. Way before you even came into this body. And so it not to diminish the contracts that were in, in place. Those were all agreements it, and they're all important a, and they're valid and they're beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Every bit of them. There was there was a higher contract that was in place and and yeah, we didn't know until that, we knew and when we knew was, there was yeah. no denying that duct tape ripped off all my eyelashes <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean it was ripped off so fast that our heads were spinning for months you know and now we're kind of we're able to settle in and like okay this is what we're supposed to be doing and so today on this 1111 portal we're recording our story Mm -hmm. And there is absolutely only love and heartfelt truth in this story. And yes, people have been hurt. And yes, you know, there has been pain and there has been, there has been loss and there has been closures and there's been new beginnings, but pain is unavoidable. Suffering is optional. And so we choose to take our lessons and rebirth them into something that's higher and that's why we're here you know to help you do the same and to help you realize the tantric union within your own self and possibly in this life you have a contract with a twin that you're calling in you know so um we started this channel not knowing what it's for but this is really what it's for is to share our truth and to share how we show up and how we can help and serve. And I apparently am supposed to go on a solo voyage across the world. I thought she was going. And the only reason I said yes is because I knew she's going to be with me. And I wouldn't have said yes if I didn't think she was going. But I did say yes. And since I said yes, then I found out she wasn't going to go. And I'm still going. And apparently there's an activation that I'm supposed to be doing over there in Egypt while she's over here holding it down. And I can't, I will not deny that I like, oh, I want to go. <laughs> I want to be there. I also said yes, but the universe said no. Um, not this round. Not this round. And Egypt has been on my list. If there will be a my time where she life. stands it's on like that ground. As far back as I can remember, and my awareness of um, Egypt. <laughs> As, as a child, it was always a fascination, and I've always had this deep connection to Ra. Um, 
and I know that my time will come and it's uh, but I know that there's a reason and I know that yeah Tink needs her journey too Tink's been I'm, locked in a in a uh, a lantern for a while and so I didn't know I was Tink in a needs lantern to go fly fly around I was safe in the lantern you were safe but you couldn't go anywhere no I so, could only go so far and that's okay. Now she's I got enjoyed that freedom safety. to spread her wings. But yes, my wings are quite huge. And, you know, I want to share with each and every one of you how to open your own wings. Wings up. Wings up, goddesses. Wings up. You see this one is the highest. Bringing it in. Dropping it down. Opening up the heart space. And allowing ourselves to rise like the phoenix that we are. That phoenix has risen. I started a phoenix tattoo December of 2020 with no idea what 2021 held. So that phoenix 2019. Is was it December 2019? Did you start it was 2020. Oh, yeah, 2019. Yeah. Yes, with no idea what that next year and a half would hold and then I added some to it when I knew that my phoenix was moving out of that and and that's when the artist added a bunch of smoke around it the smoldering was happening and he added all the smoke and some a lot of the colors started coming out because all the line work was done to the whole entire soundtrack of tool while discussing Alex Gray artwork mm -hmm. the whole entire time and then you know as the color started coming in this summer um i also got a tattoo with my daughter uh, a lotus and a celtic mother and then i got a tattoo for my son and my daughter above that with the sacred symbol for mother in sanskrit divine mother and then as we came into union and our family became complete and our soul family became complete then i got a tattoo for my other two children as well um, my bonus children. And so now it's time for that Phoenix tattoo to be finished and fully risen because the birth has happened and there is the death is, is complete. And that, um, that cycle is, is finished. It's done. And so there's complete transparency at this point. There's absolutely no space for us to not walk in our truth right now. There's no room for it. So if you wondered and didn't know. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so we'll probably break this down into videos, but the live videos are just going to stay as they were. But we're going to break it down into shorter segments, you know, to digest um, into parts. But we wanted to share all of it, just the whole thing, everything that happened since the beginning of our acknowledgement of recognition of, our first time together at that Jamba Juice back in, you know, summer of 2019 to the, all the 10 years before that, or eight years before that, that we were kind of dancing around each other. And the 20 years before that, where we were still going to the same places, you know, I mean, like it's been this, this, well, it's just like the infinity, the, you know, and that's how butterflies fly. They, did you notice they fly in that pattern? So the butterflies have, uh, have flown. They're open and out and out of the cocoon. The chrysalis, the moth, has, has, has found her wings. And it's time for us to fully and completely share our gifts in the world. So stay tuned. Um, if you have found this video, it's here for a reason. Reach out to us. Subscribe. Comment. We do our best to read, read all the comments and you can always find us on our website, yogaforlove.com. And uh, yeah, so we'll just continue to share our journey here on our full moon and new moon videos. And as it continues to unfold. Yes. Because we're only just getting started. We are. We have the whole <laughs> rest of our lives together. So excited. So yay. Yay. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for your support and your love and uh, for listening to our story. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Number seven. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste.